Okay, so I'm going to start recording here. Um, so we, we went through the, um, the promos. We just found out the promos for April, and we're going to post those in the group, so I'm not going to go over them now. You'll see them in the group. And we talked about all the groups coming up in April. We'll post those in the group as well. So anybody listening to the recording of this, check the, the team page, and we'll talk about all the groups there. Um, but now we're going to get into the meat of it. So maybe, Terry, if you don't mind sharing your part first for a few minutes, and then we'll... Um, shift on over to Shannon. Sure. Yes. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted right there. Um, well, I just wanted to share real quick because um, Sarah shared this with our team. We had a call on Sunday, um, and I just thought it was neat to hear she actually, she, I, I don't know what, they were in the mountains somewhere. I think it was like Asheville, I want to say, North Carolina. Um, and I don't know if you guys even know Michelle Myers. Um, she is a uh, well-known, I guess, beach buddy coach um, who has, Sarah I know follows closely. Um, I follow her as well. I don't know, do any of you follow her or know who she is? Nadine, I'm sure you do. Do you, yeah. Um, she is a very strong Christian and she, um, you know, all of her posts are, you know, Christian based, you know, she's, um, constantly putting in, um, you know, different Bible verses and how she, um, goes about just her day, her business, her life with God. And so she, um, has this, you know, sort of niche market, um, that has grown and grown and grown. Um, I know her husband is a pastor. Um, and when Sarah was in the town, she, she remembered that she was from there and one of her Instagram posts, she said something like, Hey, what do you recommend we do here? My whole family's here. Um, do you have any suggestions? And she actually replied to her and told her to go to, um, this, it was like a park where they, um, I, and I hope I'm getting all this right, <laughs> a park where they, I guess, filmed the Hunger Games, and I don't know, it was really pretty, whatever, so they, the whole family went, and then she also invited Sarah and her family to go to her husband's church, which just happened to be like five minutes away from this park, so, you know, Sarah said she tried to convince her whole family to come and they did. Um, so on Sunday morning, they all went to her church and she said it was really nice. And afterwards she actually got to meet her um, and talk to her for a while. And it's not like they you know, meant to talk about Beachbody at all, but Sarah did. I mean, she was very open and took time to talk to her and um, you know, they made a connection and, and she just, I guess, wanted to pick her brain a little bit and see, you know, how she started and where she went and how it all happened. Um, and, and she kind of told her, she, you know, she, she starts like all of us, you know, she said now, um, it's, it's different when she looks back and looks at, you know, her Facebook posts or her, you know, how she invited and things like that. She, she kind of laughs because she's learned along the way, but she said she, um, she now, you know, runs this, it, it's like a huge challenge group, I guess. And, um, she doesn't run one specifically, each month, but it's just kind of an ongoing one and, and she adds value to it in some way. She didn't really get into the specifics. Um, the only requirement for someone to get in is that they have to drink Shakeology. So they don't necessarily have to have a Beachbody program or, you know, a specific workout or whatever. Um, they just have to be drinking Shakeology and they're in. And at some point, you know, she doesn't they don't have to buy it right before. They just have to make sure they buy it that month and then, you know, whatever. Um, but she's at a point where she can do that. So that's what she does now. And Sarah is asking her, you know, like, how are you able to, you know, get out on all these social media um, networks and things like that um, with who you are and your niche and your brand and whatnot. Um, and, you know, she obviously has developed, I think she's been a beach buddy coach for six years and she said, um, which I thought was good. She said, you just, you have to sort of find yourself in all of this and be you, um, and promote you, um, 
and people who like you, you know, for who you are and what you are sharing will come to you. Um, and she said, that's really like what she has strived to do from the very beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously it's, it's worked for her. Um, but, um, she said it takes, you know, it takes time. She's been doing it for six years. It takes time. And now she said, you know, she has like three assistants working for her and you know, she can't, she said, it looks like I'm everywhere and I'm doing all these things, but she's like, I'm not, you know, I, I have help and, and things like that. And, and, um, but she kind of just sort of encouraged Sarah to, you know, kind of not be all Beachbody, but use Beachbody as an outlet to kind of get yourself out there and share with others, like your story, what, what you want to get out of this and what you want to share. Um, and she said, you know, she's, she's not posting, you know, Shakeology pictures or, you know, but she said she did and she had to, to sort of get, you know, people to understand what she was doing. Um, and she said, and now it's, it's just sort of easier for her to, um, to share her story in her life and ask people to come along for the ride. So I think she has like her own clothing line. Um, she has, uh, I, I don't, I, I don't know if it's like a workout. Um, I don't know if she has her own like fitness center, something like that as well. Um, so she's, she thanks Beachbody for allowing her to like do all those things that she wanted to do, you know, and now she, because she has the following and, and, um, obviously the money to do that, she is able to do it. So, um, I just thought it was cool. And she, she said she was so like nice and just stopped and talked to her and she said she probably would have continued to do so. So, um, she got to meet her and her family and she said her husband, the, you know, the service was great too. So just wanted to share that pass it on. Sarah's sick or she would have shared it herself. So I told her I would try to remember everything she told me and pass it on. That's really cool. It's always so neat to hear stories and, you know, we get, uh, we only hear certain people from our upline and whatever. So it's always so neat to hear other people's successes and how different they've taken the spin on Beachbody. And that's really cool. It sounds like she was so nice. I love hearing that. <laughs> yeah, say she was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Well, we're going to shift gears a little bit now. And um, Shannon wanted to share with us tonight a bit about her journey and um, how um, she's kind of taken on more things now than she ever dreamed she may have in the beginning. And I think it's really timely for some of um, the newer coaches coming on board to just kind of hear that we all start in, in one place and we keep building and building and building and, um, and moving forward. So take it away. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So what, what sparked this was that I received a very, very special phone call. Um, I forgot it was either Friday or Saturday from, um, I'm not going to say who it's from, but from another coach um, that is not on my team, but is part of Inspiration Nation, thanking me for everything that I've, that I'm doing and that, you know, what I'm doing is not going unnoticed and how March has been a very tough month for everybody and how I still managed to get um, SC14 and how she just wants to soak everything up and, you know, learn as much as she can can from me and Kathleen and the other you know leaders of this group and I don't think she realized like how and I shared this with her but I don't think she realized exactly how much that phone call meant to me um, and I might get a little emotional so I'm sorry um, because a year ago you know as a new coach I struggled you guys have no idea how much I struggled I barely hit SC every month I was so negative all the time. I thought about quitting so much. And I never in a million years ever thought I would be a leader or even considered a leader or somebody would want to, you know, learn as much as, you know, they can from me. You know, so I, I, I just wanted, so like ever since I got this phone call, I just wanted to shout out to like all the new coaches or anybody who's struggling right now, things that, I went through that helped me and like maybe um, you guys could have a few takeaways, but um, I don't know. I, you know, thank you. And you know, it, that call just meant so much. So 
the first thing I want to um, say is that, like I said, I was so insecure as a new coach. I remember I was even so fearful of posting in a challenge group for the first time. I have no idea why. Copy, paste, that's it. Not, not difficult. But that's how insecure I was, okay? I became discouraged a lot. I you know I shared this with you before with all the no's that I got. I took it extremely personal. Um, and I was always waiting for Kathleen to tell me what to do. I didn't do anything until Kathleen told me what to do. And that's like the worst thing you could possibly do. Like when you sign up as a beach body coach and you get done with your, your 30 day coach training, you are now the CEO of your own business. And when I realized that I was just like, okay, it's up to me. I will go to my coach for guidance. But at the end of the day, it's up to me to do the work. She doesn't have to tell me to invite. She doesn't have to tell me anything. It's, I know the basics, and now I just need to go out and do it. Um, so one of the things that I've learned along the way is that this is not a business for just today. It's not a business for just hitting SC this month. It is a business for hopefully a lifetime, right? So the key is to build relationships. So even if you hit SC this month, continue those conversations, continue messaging people, continuing starting relationships with people, continue to even grow relationships with the people who say no. Um, because even though you've already hit SC or you didn't has, uh, hit SC this month, these relationships will gradually build and build and build for you to, to set up to hit SC every month. That's how I'm, I'm at SC 14 right now. It's not because, you know, of all the work I did last month. It's because of all the work I've done every single previous month leading up to this month. So while a lot of coaches are struggling, I hit SC, I think, at, at the very the first couple of days of the month because I just continued the relationships. I just continued to push forward and just continued, you know, to, to grow. So I, I know I keep saying build relationships and, you know, you're probably wondering like how, you know, especially with people who say, who say no to you. Um, so like, for example, if I see somebody on Facebook having a bad day, I don't, I don't just comment underneath. I actually send them a personal message. I'm sorry to see that you're having a bad day. What is wrong? Because that is showing that I actually truly care about what, what they're feeling. I'm not trying to make a sale. I, I want to actually build a relationship with them. Or if they're having a good day or, you know, if they're having a birthday, I don't just post on them. I send them a personal message and, and, and wish them a happy birthday. Like, I think these little things are key to building relationships, even if people have said no to me. Um, if they say no to me and, and they're going to the gym or they're trying another shake, they're trying isogenics, guess what? I still message them once a month, every couple months, whatever I feel like. Hey, how's your health and fitness journey going? because it's showing that I did not forget about them. So relationships are key and continuing these relationships. You know, um, I get a lot of my, my um, people out of um, my free clean eating ads on my like page. And that's how I, I meet a lot of people out of my network. Um, I also, when I'm a part of like a group, like a mom's group, um, uh, whatever group it is, I'm part of a, gen a huge general hospital group right now because I watch the soap opera. Yes, I do. I admit it. Um, so I friend request people. I friend request people that I think that may be my niche market. If they have a picture of their children in, in, their, in their profile picture or because I feel like I relate a lot to moms, um, or whatever it may be, I send them a friend request. If they don't accept it, they don't accept it. You know, we were just talking the other day in um, one of the groups how, you know, somebody mentioned that they get upset about, um, you know, being added to all these Danbury groups and mascara groups and, and whatever it is. And I used to be mad, but then I, I shifted my thinking. I'm like, duh, I could start friend requesting these people and build my market. Like, how cool is that, right? Because you always want to build your market. You don't want to stick with the same core group of people, you know, on your friends and family. You want to you want to break out of that. Um, so that's a, you know, you always want to continue to add people um, almost every day. Um, add people, you know, that you can possibly build a relationship with. I started out with 223 friends, and a year later, a year year and a couple months later, I'm now over a thousand. Um. Oh, and also when it comes to those online groups, 
don't don't post about your challenge groups in those groups. It just turns people off. Um, nobody wants to see it. So what I do again is send friend requests and send personal messages to these people and just be and not even beach body related start a message like whatever they post on in the in the, the group, you can send them a personal message related to to something that speaks to you. Um, so because even on your on your Facebook, and I learned this the very hard way, and actually um, a coach from a very different group, she was actually, I think, the coach in my very first challenge group. She noticed that when I was posting on my Facebook that everything sounded very salesy. So I always felt like if I didn't post it, like post like, oh, my challenge group, or I didn't say something about Shakeology at the end, you know, message me if you're interested. Every single post said, if you're interested in learning more about Shakeology or a challenge group or whatever, every single post was message me because I felt like, um, you know, I was going to miss somebody, you know, and she told me that, you know, your, your posts are sounding too salesy and thank goodness for her telling me that because I would never have known. Right. So, um, I guess now I relate it to, you, you see all these network marketing companies on, I see Roden Fields, I see Jamberry Nails, I see, and, and they're focused on the sale of that product. You know, they post, you know, the, solely about the sale of their product. And you know what I do? I don't even pay attention. They don't talk about what, what their, their skincare has done for their face or how great it makes them feel. It, they show a before and after picture and say, buy my product. And guess what? I don't even read them. Well, I used to. I just look right over them. And that goes the same for us too. So when you post about a challenge group or when you post about whatever it is, it's not about the gimmick. It's about you and your experience and how it makes you feel. Because the more I started sharing about me and my journey and about my thoughts and my feelings, even as a coach, I've been attracting more people. As soon as I started talking about my coaching experience, my team is growing like crazy right now, um, just within like these last two months. Um, because I started talking just about the little things, you know, even though people aren't commenting or aren't liking, they're still, they're still watching, they're watching you. Um, and, uh, let's see. So also too, I try and soak in as much as I can from team calls, from, you know, Melanie Mitchell's Monday night call from team inspiration nations call from, you know, if I see that somebody else is hosting another call, I try and learn as much as I can from the, for this business, because that is how much I want to succeed. So there's always there's always going to be takeaways from everything. I make sure I try and go to events, um, which I'm looking forward to some of this year. Um, so because there's always a takeaway that I, I get from them. So I, I stress to my team that these calls are so important because I also felt like even as a new coach, it made me do more because I felt like everybody else, I felt like Nadine and Terry and Jen, like everybody else was hitting SC and I was like the only one struggling. But then they would talk about how many people they were inviting. And I'm like, I'm not inviting. So no wonder why I wasn't hitting SC, you know? So, and then also too, um, what also changed for me is when I realized a light bulb went off is when I realized how important rank advancement is. So important. And it's important because challenge, selling challenge packs is only going to get you so far. But to actually build a successful beach body business, it is all about rank advancing. Um, and I was just telling this to my team either last week or two weeks ago or whatever it was, like even as Emerald, like you get those, um, oh my God, brain fart, $14, uh, help me, help me, help me, help me. Psycho bonus, sorry, psycho bonuses. So those $14, believe it or not, adds up. And as a diamond coach, those $18 adds up. And I cannot wait to whatever star diamond I can get to to start getting those quarterly bonuses because you know, now that I'm actually creating a team underneath me, I am realizing that, you know, that's, that's money that I would never have had just by selling challenge packs. So it's that extra income a month. And also too, it's, you know, I'm building a team underneath me to go out there and help change the world. Cause that's my mission. When I started as a social worker and Kathleen, I don't know if this happened to you or not, but when I, my very first day at my very first job at a nursing home, Somebody, it was an activities worker, told me that, Shannon, you're not going to be able to change the world. And that pissed me off. That pissed me off. 
Like, it just goes to show you how jaded some people are. Why can't I? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to change, you know, the whole entire world, but I can darn as hell try and change as many people as, you know, I can. Because I got to tell you, these products, by me pushing play every day, by me um, drinking this shake every day, has made me, and being a beach body coach, has made me the most confident that I've ever been in my entire life. And for example, this, you know, when I was, you know, at home in Atlantic City a couple of weeks ago, you know, my, I got into the car with my brother-in-law and my sister, and the very first thing they said to me was, no, no beach body talk. And that comment would have really upset me because of my, how insecure I used to be. But guess what? My comment was to them was, you know what? If you guys cannot be happy that for the first time in my life that I am happy and that I'm extremely passionate about something, that's your problem. Oh, well. And I truly meant it because that is how passionate I am about this and how happy this whole experience has made me. And um, what else? Yes, I think that's that's pretty much <laughs> all I wanted to share with you. It's so funny, Kathleen, because I never considered myself a leader, um, and now you can't shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> no, it, and I, I mean, you brought up so many good points, really, so many good points. I think, like, some of the highlights to me that you were talking about, I, like, it, one is that idea of you soaking it in. Like, this, I think that was something that was kind of an aha moment for me as well, like, that I needed to be teachable. Like, yes, I enter into this business with some, some knowledge and some experience and whatever, but, but there's, I, I can't remember who, I, I, I hate to not quote the people, this is not an original idea for me, but anyway, the idea being that, some people are inspired by others' successes and some people are like jealous and competitive and whatever. And if we can all strive to be inspired by that, then you have so much to learn because there's so much out there. And um, I mean, just speaking for myself, like when I enter into that because I grew up with an older sister and it was always about a competition and whatever, whatever, when I could finally kind of come to terms with that mind frame and instead learn from these successful leaders and get on calls and take away pieces of information that hit home for me or whatever, that was definitely a turning point for me. So yeah. I think what you were saying about soaking it in, I mean, if you, if you can take those bits from different places and I mean, I highly encourage you to get on other people's calls. And like Terry was saying, like meeting, following another coach from another upline. I mean, it's because there are different things that will relate to different people. So it's so, yeah. it's so great. And there's and so also to accept criticism. Cri uh, what's that word? Not criticism. Um, the positive criticism. What is that? Uh, Critique, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Like I could constructive. It, it, it yes. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Constructive uh, criticism. Because like, you know, we're just trying to help you. So like I could have taken it personally when some, you know, when that, when it was Jen um, from the, uh, no, Jamie, Jamie from another group um, that told me about, you know, my Facebook posting being too salesy. Like I could have easily taken that personally because I was trying really hard to blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it really helped me. So I think constructive criticism also and is key to, and to not take it personally as well. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's such a good point, too, because I think everybody is well-intentioned when they try and help out and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, then, I mean, the, the other things that stood out for me about what you're saying, the rank thing. So, so that's such a good point, too, that, that there are so many great things about rank that maybe are hard to grasp when we are newer and we're just, we don't want to sacrifice commission for volume and that even that concept is kind of crazy. But the other thing, I just, I happen to go through March, because I'm trying to do some end of month statistics for myself so I can kind of track and keep all that stuff. But I actually, from, be, from being Emerald and above and you get those leads and all that, I got 10 leads this month, 10. Isn't that amazing? I mean, and some of, not all of them purchased something, a few of them did, but some of them are just free memberships, but if they buy something, and some of them got the club membership to get the um, the trial and whatever, and you just think like, those are 10 people I didn't have to reach out to at all. Those are just because we're at a rank where we can get leads. And then, um, so anyway, so I thought that was something worth noting. And then the other part about the cycle bonuses, I think we've talked about this before, but I know there are some newer coaches on the call. And I just, 
I have to say that the cycle bonuses truly add up. I mean, they make up over half of my income right now, and sometimes more than that, depending on the month and the whatever. But it really is, um, although in the beginning, it's hard to imagine that it's going to $14 or $18 is going to add up, but it truly, truly does. And we have a team that, um, because we work together as a team, when we, it, it's hard to understand the concept, but when we add coaches to our network, they're being at, the volume is being added to everybody above them. So we are always helping each other with volume. So it really is a whole team effort. And why we, why we consider ourselves a team is because we truly are helping each other out with volume so that we can all cycle bonus and all um, you know, keep moving forward and all that kind of stuff. And we can have another call about that. If anybody's confused about how that works volume, maybe that's a good call for another time, but, but how we actually, how being a team actually works. Um, yeah. And you know, um, you know, you know, this Kathleen that in the beginning, I did not understand how important it was to get to Emerald. I just wanted to get that commission, um, you know, from the challenge packs and the Shakeology orders every month because, you know, financially we were struggling and it wasn't until I got the concept of getting up to Emerald and then getting up to Diamond, especially um, the importance of that until I actually got there. Because like I said, like you have more potential to make income when you're at those other levels, you know, as then you won't, you don't make any extra income as a, as just, a, you know, a regular coach, you know, like it's just your, your challenge pack sales and that's it. So there's, there's a lot of benefits for rank advancing. Right, right. And just to add to that, so for me, where I am, even if I don't sell a challenge pack one week, I still make income off of the volume. So that's kind of how it just keeps building. And um, I, I know this is confusing. And we can, like I said, we'll break it down in another call. Maybe we'll do a little. I, I never know quite how to do that. Maybe with the dry erase board or something. I'll figure it out. <laughs> My paper drawing on that one video. That's funny. Anyway, and the last thing I just wanted to, to point out from what Shannon was saying was that idea about being passionate. I think I was just listening to another podcast today about, um, I thought this was so interesting and I wish I wrote it down. I left it in my purse, but it sparked my interest when you said it. Um, the idea that what, like distractions come about when we are not focused on our why and our mission. And I think this this job has the potential to be the most distracting job I think I've ever been a part of. I mean, it's the most amazing job, but you get on Facebook and it is like, be bong, be bong, be bong <laughs> video, watch this fun thing. Watch this. And I just was realizing like, why is it so distracting? Well, sometimes for me, it's because I'm not focused on why am I really doing this? Why am I really passionate about it? Who am I trying to help? What is the meaning of this for me? Whatever. Um, and I just, when I hear you say, Shannon, about how passionate you are, I think that makes you more focused on what you're actually trying to do and perhaps makes the distractions, although they're still there, minimized a bit so that you can allow those to go away and you can allow yourself to focus on your goal. You know, mm -hmm. um, I just thought that was so interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to get that quote out there for you <laughs> once I get it written down. But um, Anyway, how about anybody else? Anybody want to add something or have questions for Shannon? I, you can either unmute yourself or raise your hand and I will unmute you. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Everybody was just taken aback, <laughs> speechless. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, how about other stuff? Anybody have questions about what's coming up in April or anything else that you wanted to get to? Deb, I know you had some questions. I don't know if they were answered for you. Wait, let me unmute you. Uh, yes, I, I was looking for some dates for a clean eating. So April 11th sounds great. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. People, so I want to make sure that was I have the date. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um. Okay, well, we are going, if nobody has any other questions, Jen was actually going to, I'm going to unmute you, Jen. It was going to actually, oh, no, oh, there we go. <laughs> it was going to help us end the call tonight with a little inspiration um, that she found a little nugget. <laughs> well, go. I hope my computer doesn't freeze while I'm talking because it's froze about six times during the call so far. So if oh, you lose me for a minute, that's why. But um, I guess... Today I was just kind of thinking about, you know, 
what I should say or what might be helpful to people. And I came across, just, I don't know who said it, but um, they just said, be careful how you are talking to yourself because you are listening. And I think a lot of people kind of get into where they're, you know, saying negative things to themselves and then that carries over into maybe their posts that they're making or whatever. And I just think it's really important for myself even, and so I forget if it's for myself, maybe a lot of other people too, to not forget that even though you're not saying it out loud, the thing you're saying to yourself inside your head, you know, your, li your, your mind is listening to that and it can really kind of bring you down. And then if you're brought down, then what you're portraying is brought down as well. And like we've talked about a lot on this call, a lot of it is people want to connect to you. People want, you know, to see, I mean, everybody knows that everybody's not happy all the time and everybody has ups and downs in their lives. And it's important to kind of share those too, but to also just remember that, um, you know, inside you're a good person. We're all doing this because we want to help people. And so to just not talk negative to yourself inside your head, is just a good way to kind of keep things going in a positive motion with your business too. So that was kind of my thought for the day. <laughs> oh, I love that. Will you post it in the group? Yes, I will. <laughs> That's so important. I think I need to, that reminder myself sometimes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> it's so true. So true. That'd be a good one for the challenge groups too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of these people are asking to be part of these challenge groups because they have a negative feeling about themselves. And so, you know, just kind of a reminder that part of that is on you. You know, yeah, somebody might say something negative to you to make you feel bad or you might whatever. But part of it is totally up to you, too, as to what you're saying to yourself. So and you're in control of that. You know, you're in control of whether you wake up in the morning and say, you know, something negative versus something positive about yourself. So it's kind of like there's no excuse <laughs> because it's you. You know what I mean? Like you can't use as an excuse like, oh, somebody said something horrible to me today, so now I'm going to have a bad day. There's also what you say to yourself. So That's so true. That just reminded me. I remember hearing this like years ago. I can't remember who it was, maybe Oprah or something, that when you walk by a mirror, you should say, hey, gorgeous, <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that, but yeah, <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's wrap up for tonight in case anybody's pushing for those goals. Um, so we'll post in the group the, um, the deals for April. We're going to post that great quote from Jen. I'm going to post, uh, do some signups for the groups coming up in April. And was there something else? No, I think that might be it. Um, if you have any other questions, of course, ask. And um, thanks for getting on today. It's so good to see you all. Happy Easter for all those celebrating. Um, and happy spring. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.